shot went underneath the uh, basket. A three-point field goal from the right-hand side. She drives ahead of the field and lays it in. She's got no three-pointer right side. It is good. Right across the lane and a lay-in. Dangerous cross-court pass, but gets it to Tomlinson who drives baseline. All right, welcome to the campus of Queensboro Community College. I'm Michael Schleifer along with Sean Couch. We're going to bring you basketball action here. Women's CUNY Athletic Conference basketball play between the wave of Kingsboro Community College. We'll get into that name in just a minute. And the Tigers of Queensboro. And uh, wh why is Queensboro called the wave? <laughs> because their campus is right on the shore of, I don't know, I guess that would be Jamaica Bay, the, the huh. inlet into Jamaica Bay, the Atlantic Ocean. They're right <laughs> just about a couple of miles down, downstream from Coney Island uh, over in the Manhattan Beach section of Brooklyn. They, I know, uh, have had a, a tough start this year. They did not play in the fall which is uh, the case for, uh, as I was showing, uh, Chris Gomez was just explaining to me, uh, a, a lot of teams in Region 15 did not play for some reason in the first half of the season, but uh, now they're getting started. And you know, as we noted in the earlier game, uh, uh, because of tournaments having so much impact on the end of the season, uh, if they can turn it around quickly, they could be a factor in, in the postseason. Well, Kingsborough has a very good player in Esther Farmer. She's from Thomas Jefferson High School in Brooklyn. This is her second year, and she's their leading scorer. You know, she does a variety of things. She shoots the ball well, rebounds, runs the floor. She's primarily is their first option and the undersized one at 5'7 as a forward. So Kingsborough has trouble rebounding the ball in some instances, but if they can get in transition, you know, they can do some damage. Greensboro, meanwhile, comes in with a, an overall record of 5-3, uh, 5-2 five and, three, uh, five and two in Region 15, and more important, 3-0 and oh in, uh, King, in uh, CUNY Athletic Conference play. Uh, they are the defending CUNY Athletic Conference champions on the, on the women's side. Well, Queensboro has a, a very good player in Sahara Mirage. Uh, she is their she is their key player. She can do it all. She can shoot the ball, pass it, and dribble. And Queensboro has uh, has good talent. So, you know, right now, uh, if you were a betting man, you know, we'd look at Queensboro. You know, <laughs> if that was something that you're into, but. You know, right now, what Kingsboro wants to establish since they're 0-3 is some identity. They want to come in here just like uh, Queensboro men did, uh, you know, just a few minutes ago and try to establish their identity. They have some talent. They just have to meld it together and try to get their, uh, you know, their teamwork together. Well, for uh, Kingsboro, it will be uh, Natalie Amorosi, Esther Farmer, Mary Carolyn Oyunai, Jarnarin, uh, Natalie Pever Peveromo and Rochelle Tomlinson starting for uh, Queensboro. Uh, Zaconia Bethea, Melissa De Jesus, Jennifer Green, Sahara Mirage, and Katrina Robinson are the starters. And uh, you do see as the teams uh, take the floor that uh, there is, well, not quite as decided a height advantage as I, uh, I might have uh, thought. But, uh, and in fact, Kingsboro controls the top. This is. Rochelle Tomlinson handling the ball for Queensboro. Of course, the women uh, play with a 30-second shot clock as compared to the men's 35-second clock. And Kingsboro on the right-hand side. They go to Amorosi, and the ball well, is taken away and stolen by Queensboro. Bethea down the right side, drives, lays it in. Zaconia Bethea on the fast break, and Queensboro is out to a quick two-point lead. Yeah, that was way too easy. Zaconia came all the way, 94 feet, and just uh, laid the ball in too easy. Kingsborough has to get back. And Queensboro, Kingsborough throws the ball, save in bounds, goes to Bethea, and Bethea drives and hits another basket. So a quick four-point lead for Queensboro, and a 30-second timeout is called by the wave of Kingsboro Community College. The Kingsboro not handling the ball really well. Baxter with the turnover. And that's the sloppy ball handling right here. They have to get it together quick. I think you were mentioning something about uh, the Kingsboro coach being uh, someone who has played uh, professionally overseas. Yeah, Katasha Artis has played professionally overseas. She played for uh, about, I believe, five or six years overseas. And she's a Brooklyn native. She's come back to her, uh, you know, her home borough to lead these girls and she's trying to build a program. This program is in its uh, 
infant stages right now, and she's trying to build it up to a CUNY power, similar to what Holstos did a few years ago. Man-to-man -man or woman-to-woman -woman defense played here by uh, Kingsborough or, or by Queensborough. Drive to the basket, and the shot is short by Amarasi, and Kingsborough, uh, Queensborough brings it back down the other side. Bethea, who has all four points in the game for Queensborough, in fact, all four points in the game, period. Mishandled the ball, it went out of bounds, and it will go back over to the Kingsborough wave. So it's Tomlinson who plays the point for Kingsborough. They go back on top. Now here is Esther Farmer on the left wing, looking at the basket. Back to Tomlinson, who goes baseline. Shot went underneath the uh, basket, hit the bottom of the backboard, was picked up and put in by Amarasi. Yeah, Natalie Amarasi has pretty good skills. She uh, hustles well. And she also rebounds well. She boxes out well. I, I got a chance to see them play against BMCC. And uh, she did a good job on the boards last game. The turnover by Queensborough, so it's a 4-2 lead for Queensborough. We're just underway. Michael Schleifer, Sean Couch with you at the gymnasium on the campus of Queensborough Community College in Bayside. I think we're, we'll question here about some of the numbers on the floor, but we'll get any corrections to you in just a moment. Here's Natalie Poveromo on the left-hand side. And cut across the lane. Running jump hook is no good. Rebound by Amarasi. Back outside to Poveromo. Her shot is short, and here come the Lady Tigers back the other way. Here is Robinson. Robinson lost the hand on Rose, picked up by Mirage. Mirage, little jumper in the lane, rolls around the rim, no good. And here is Farmer coming away with it for Kingsborough. And she'll pull it up and throw it back outside for Rochelle Tomlinson. And they'll handle it to hand it to Pavaromo, who goes to the left side. On the left wing. And that's the uh, player whose number is in question. We'll come back to that in a moment. And a foul is called an offensive foul for an illegal pick called on Esther Farmer. That's the first foul of the game for either team. Farmer picks it up for Kingsborough. It's 4-2 Queensborough. Just inside of 17 minutes to go, first half. A three-point field goal from the right-hand side. That was Katrina Robinson for Queensborough. A long three-pointer. And Queensborough's lead is ballooned to 7-2. Yeah, Katrina Robinson is a veteran of the team. She's a very good shooter. She's done a great job uh, so far this year for uh, Queensborough. I'm going to make a co correction here on the, on the floor of the basket. Earlier in the game, Mary Carolyn Oyengoran. Is number wearing number 13 for Kingsborough. And she throws the ball away. It's picked up by Bethea. She drives ahead of the field and lays it in. Bethea has six points, and Queensborough has jumped out to a 9 2 lead. Bethea's really showing good anticipation. That's her second steal. And uh, Kingsborough has to do a lot better job with their ball handling and their passing. They go outside here is Farmer on the right wing. She had a shot, but did not take it quickly enough. Now she's got an open three-pointer right side. It is good. A rainbow from Esther Farmer from the right wing just in front of her own bench. And that's her game right there. Esther sometimes looks a little unorthodox, but the ball goes into the basket, and she gets her baskets in bunches. Esther from Thomas Jefferson High School in Brooklyn. I know where that is. Pennsylvania Avenue, I believe. Is, is it still there? Yeah, that's right. And, and, and they have a very good basketball program there in Brooklyn this year. Over in the right corner, De Jesus started to go baseline, but had the ball knocked out of bounds. But it will come back to Queensboro. They have a 9-5 lead just inside of 16 minutes to go first half. There's a little flat-footed uh, set shot from Jennifer Green from the right wing. And the rebound is picked off. And it will come back the other way with Kingsborough. Anna Gabrielle Gomez is now in the game handling the ball for Kingsborough. They go over on the right hand side and back on top for May Carolyn Oyengoran. It's a mouthful. Drive across the lane and a lay in for Gomez. 
So Kingsboro showing some spunk early on. They scored the last five points. They trail by two. It's 9-7 King Queensboro with 15 minutes to go in the half. And here's a second three-pointer for Katrina Robinson. Yeah, you got to put a hand up on Katrina. If she has an open look and her feet are set, that's a great shot for uh, Queensboro. Proven commodity from the three-point line. Uh, somewhat high-scoring contest early on, 12-7. Just past the five-minute mark in the first. Oh, lazy cross-court passes taken away by Mirage. Mirage drives, and she is hammered going to the basket by Gomez. So Sahara Mirage will go to the line and shoot two. That's the way to play, Marty. That was a strong drive there by, by Sarah. Good anticipation also. Really uh, making uh, Kingsboro pay for their passes. First free throw yeah. is good. One more coming for Sahara Mirage. I remind you while we have the chance that you can get all the information you need about the CUNY Athletic Conference and its 15 member schools online. That information is available at www.cunyathletics.com. Or you can find them on Facebook. Go to groups and search the CUNY Athletic Conference. Now, there was a lane violation. Natalie Amorossi stepped in the lane, so Mirage will get another attempt from the line. She made the first, missed the second, but lane violation gives her another try. This one's off the side of the rim. What an offensive rebound. Good hustle by Bethea. In the corner now, here's Bethea open for a three. She missed everything, but another offensive rebound. Now on the other side, it was Robinson, and this time the wave takes away the rebound. Arjen Gorin with the rebound in the left corner. Farmer on the right side, back on top, Gomez. I know, again, dangerous cross court pass, but uh, this time the wave gets away with it. Shot put up by Tomlinson is short. Queensboro will bring it back down the other way. Robinson thought about taking the three, pulled it back, well, was knocked away, knocked out of bounds by Gomez. So once again, Queensboro will uh, inbound off their own sideline, opposite the Queen Kingsboro bench. Robinson open for a three again, but this time they put a hand in her face. Again, a, a dangerous cross-court pass, but to manage to slide through the jumper by Poveromo, or excuse me, by Jennifer Green was short, but the wave turned it over on their end of the floor, or on the Queensboro end of the floor. The, the Tigers will inbound underneath their own basket. You know, Queensboro has some uh, strong inside players in the presence of Natalie, uh, excuse me, not Natalie Adam Ross, I'm looking at the wrong roster, Katrina Robinson and also Stephanie yeah. Sarah Mirage. And there was Sahara Mirage, a little move along the baseline, uh, about a six footer from the right side. So it's a 15 7 lead, lead back up to eight points for Queensboro. And that's the difference right now between these two teams. Their inside presence for Queensboro uh, gives them an easier chance to rebound the ball well and to make stronger moves inside. Over almost shuffled her feet. Ball went back to the Tigers. Tigers with the home court, and I think the experience advances. They've played a lot more. And there's a, th a third three-pointer for Katrina Robinson. She has nine of the 18 Tigers points, and the lead has ballooned to 11. Yeah, Katrina's tough. She, uh, she does her thing. She can really score the ball. Gomez on top for Kingsboro on the right side. She handed to Tomlinson and back to Gomez. Tomlinson and Gomez, now they go down low. Low post pass back outside on top. The pass is, again, taken away by Bethea. Bethea streaks down the left side. Dishes off to Mirage. Mirage had it knocked away. We have a scramble for the ball. Robinson on the floor with Poveromo. And the possession arrow on the tie-up goes to Queensboro. So, again, Kingsborough not 
unexpected for a very inexperienced team that have been playing together very long turning the ball over a great deal here early in the first half. There's an open shot for Green left side another three. Wow Tigers really lighting it up from downtown they have four threes in the first uh, less than eight minutes of the first half and they lead by 14. Yeah they're, they're blazing outside from the three point line and Kingsborough is not getting out the shooters. Tigers in a 2 3 zone. Gomez on top. Sheath puts up a three back of the key. It's no good. Mirage comes away with the rebound for Queensborough. Looking to dish off. Now she takes it herself. Goes cross court. But over the head of Bethea and out of bounds. Yeah, Mirage trying to do a little bit too much right there, coming up and not really setting her feet on that pass. But you can see that uh, Queensborough has a nice nucleus of uh, Takana Bethea, Katrina Robinson. And also uh, Sahara Mirage. That's a that's a nice nucleus right there for a championship run. They have a very good team, and you know I'd like to see them play against Hostos also. I know that would be a great game. All right. Well, Hostos, of course, in, in uh, really in the last few years has developed a terrific program. A team that a uh, school that didn't have a basketball program for many years. Uh, we'd see the community colleges come in. Actually, uh, Hunter at one time had a junior varsity team. Uh, that played in the against the community colleges and Hostos was not to be heard from, but uh, I guess it's in the last four or five years that they they've actually uh, one of I forget whether it was the men's or the women's team that actually went to national prominence at uh, one time. That was the men's team. The men's team started out with Bobby Holford a few years ago and did a excellent job uh, gaining national prominence prominence and now even you know to this day uh, the men's team which won last year. You know, is a tremendous uh, program over there in Hostos. They really recruit well. They're dedicated uh, to to becoming like a better program. They have year-round situations where they train and do things. They do a great job as a unit getting things done. That's Sean Couch. I'm Michael Schleifer here with you at Queensboro Community College. Queensboro's women's team with a 21-7 first half lead over Kingsboro. Queensboro has hit eight of 13 from the floor and four out of five from three point range uh, here in the first uh, in just over eight minutes of the first half. Not surprising that they hold on to a 14 point lead. Kingsboro will need to tighten up the defense. Here's Gomez. She tries to drive through the lane. Lost the ball. Was picked up in the paint and stolen back by Tomlinson who drives and lays it in. Rochelle Tomlinson with her first two points of the game. And it's 21-9. Kingsborough has to be aggressive defensively, get some easy baskets as they did there. Here's Gomez hustling to get the long defensive rebound. And she will bring it back on top to Tomlinson. Right now Esther Farmer on the bench for Kingsborough. On the right hand side, Povalermo, again, dangerous cross court pass, but gets it to Tomlinson, who drives baseline and puts it in. And that's what Katrina Artis is looking for from Tomlinson. She has that ability to score the basketball, but so far this year, she hasn't really gotten her rhythm. This could be the game where she can come out of her shell. Kingsboro uh, hanging tough. They're, they're down 10. But you, you could see early in the game that they might have been. Uh, Discouraged, but they have not been, and now they force a turnover. That was a uh, double dribble. Cassandra Davis, who was in the game for Queensboro, and Kingsboro can bring it down right. within ten. See the move there by uh, by Rochelle. Nice baseline move. Nice soft finish. And it's uh, over and over again. It seems that it's uh, Natalie Pov Poveromo. Throwing those uh, dangerous cross court passes. Some of them have have actually worked and uh, resulted in points for the for the way but a number have been picked off and th or thrown away. Yeah those if those passes aren't snapped across they uh, they don't they don't work. And what I mean by soft finish that you know not it was a strong move but a nice soft finish at the rim. Anybody was wondering yeah. <laughs> out there you know not trying to diss my girl Rochelle. Yeah. <laughs> Now as uh, Denise Finnegan started to go to the basket from the uh, low post she was blocked blocking foul goes against Natalie Amarasi uh, her first four on the team 
And again, Queensboro inbounding underneath their own basket. 14 fouls against Kingsboro, none against Queensboro up to this point. And the inbounds pass is fumbled by Robinson and or by Mirage and taken away by Tomlinson. So again, the wave will try to bring that lead down underneath double digits. It's 21-11. Gomez goes cross court back on top to Gomez. She had an open three, passed it up. Pavlermo from the left side, it's no good. Long rebound, and Tomlinson runs it down in the corner. And let's see, she stepped on the end line, and the ball will go back over to Kings uh, to a uh, Queensboro. Yeah, Kingsboro's not really, you know, demonstrating their passing ability here. There's not enough ball fakes, not enough faking, you know, to try to create some passing lanes and also some driving lanes. And that's something that they have to work on. Team is still in its early stages of development. Uh, we have a timeout called now by Queensboro. I don't want to remind you, fans, did you know that Con Edison is now in its 33rd year of support for CUNY Athletics? The relationship began way back in 1976. They say before Ed Koch became mayor, I'll take it back further than that, before Jimmy Carter became president. All right, I don't know if anybody remembers Jimmy Carter any better than Ed Koch, but, you know, He's still in the public eye. Con Edison now supports all 24 CUNY Athletic Conference championships. Don't forget that at the conclusion of today's game, we'll be selecting the Con Edison player of the game. So make sure to stay tuned for that. Well, we have this democratic vibe and a 70s <laughs> democratic vibe going with Jimmy Carter and Ed Koch. <laughs> and the strange thing is in New York City, we, right. ha we haven't we haven't had a, a Democratic mayor here in, in 15 years, although I, I don't know how much Republicans consider the, the last two mayors, the current mayor and the predecessor, to, uh, to be Republicans. Yeah, yeah, I guess uh, I'm, not, I'm not ultra political, but I know that Mike Bloomberg has uh, done a nice job for the city. He's kept the city together in some tough times. Yeah, well, uh, in... in uh, I believe it was in 2000 he changed party lines just so he could run because he kind of guy uh, who would never get the nomination on the Democratic side. So put him on the Republican side, and there he's, he's won two in a row. All right. Queensboro into inbound. Long pass to half court, and it's taken away by Poveromo, who drives and lays it in. Natalie Poveromo brings Kingsboro to within eight, and here's another steal by Poveromo. She gives to Gomez. Back to Poveromo, who will bring it back outside. Poveromo's an interesting player. She, she has a very good three-point shot, but she doesn't take it. And sometimes she tries to go in there amidst the bigger players, and she gets a shot block. Poveromo driving into the paint, threw up a well, balance one-hander, but she was fouled going up. Both teams uh, struggling with their ball handling at this point. Kingsborough has turned the ball over nine, nine times, but uh, Queensboro has really allowed the wave to stay in the game. They've turned it over eight times. Kingsborough can get a sec second option going between Tomlinson or uh, May Carolyn, Oren Gorin, or even Poveromo. Then it gives them more of a balance. Right now, it's just been Esther Baxter, Esther Baxter. So if one of these girls can come through, then, you know, that's the start, a building block towards some, you know, some winning. Poveromo hits both free throws, and Kingsboro uh, has scored the last eight points. They're back within six. It's 21-15. Pump back in the corner and a drive attempt by Finnegan. She's tied up underneath the basket, throws it back outside. Now a 15-footer from the left wing is good. That was Cassandra Davis. Kingsboro, Queensboro really spreading out the scoring, getting contributions from several players. The lead is back to eight. It's 23-15. Gomez, top of the key, cross court. Tomlinson's open for a three. Off the rim, no good. Soaring in for the rebound was Oyen Goran. Right. We got it back out to Gomez, but Gomez has it taken away by Bethea. Bethea, one on three, wisely brings it back out. Right. Off balance, one-hander, though, is no good. That was from uh, Tavares. And we have a foul on the backcourt that will go against Queensboro. And Tavares, again, perhaps out of frustration committing that foul. She turned the ball over in the backcourt after taking a, an ill-advised shot. And Kingsboro brings it back down. Eight minutes to go, first half, 23-15 is your score with Queensboro in the lead. 
Over on a cross court to Tomlinson in the paint. To Orin Goran. She's tied up. They dish it back out. Gomez down to six on the shot clock. Cross court for Orin Goran. Drives to the middle and lays it in. Orin Goran is a very good player. You would like to see her have the ball in her hands a little bit more because she can make things happen. You know, even though she's a, a bigger player, she makes good decisions with the basketball. She makes players who have trouble creating space for themselves get easier shots. And there's be, a, there it is right there. And see, that's winning basketball. When you can find one player that can create for others, then what you have is a player that makes everyone better. And maybe we can see some of that from Orange Gorn. There it is right there. Tomlinson drives. And that's, that's a perfect example of it right there. You put your best player in the middle of the floor and then let that player make decisions. And then everybody else becomes players. And what you're seeing is, I, I think, you know, somewhat surprising when I heard that Kingsborough hadn't played yet uh, before January 1st this year. Uh, I really wasn't sure what we would expect to see on the floor, but it looked like uh, this is a team with a lot of talent and just needs some time to play together. Kingsborough has some girls that can play. It's just that they don't understand their spacing right now. And, you know, and find someone like May Owen Gorn to go along with Esther Farmer. You have two players that have you know multiple skills and can do some things and you can see they're on a 10-2 run right now Kingsborough climbing back slowly into this game All right they were down 21 to 7 uh, it seems like just a couple of minutes ago and uh, now with 722 on the clock in the first half Kingsborough has come back to uh, within six and Rochelle Tomlinson is at the line she will take shoot two team fouls have kind of evened up now Kingsborough had four early all right, still just with those four, and uh, Queensborough now with three. But Tomlinson misses the first free throw. Another one coming. And this one is good. Kingsborough, three of four from the line as a team. They have pulled back to within five. It's 23-18. Kingsborough really out of sorts here. Bethea has it taken away by Tomlinson and then fouls her to prevent the fast break. So Bethea picks up her first. Bethea, who had six points very early on in this game, has kind of uh, disappeared the last few minutes. Gomez on top goes cross court Tomlinson and back on top to Gomez. And they've got Povalormo, which was briefly open for a three, but wisely passed it up. Down to 15 on the shot clock. Gomez out between the circles. Gomez seems to have taken the place of Esther Farmer uh, at the point in this game. Down to five on the shot clock. Gomez drives. Way wild off-balance shot, but I've got to say a foolish foul by Tavares, who picks up her second. And that will put... Anna Gabrielle Gomez at the line for two. And Sean, you never want to shoot a player who's taking a, a bad shot like that because that shot had no, didn't have a prayer. And here you're giving uh, Gomez an opportunity to further cut into that lead. And see, uh, Queensboro is just doing things that, you know, are just little nitpicky things that are taken away from the edge that they had. You know, they have to really try to re regain their rhythm right here. 23-19, Kingsborough back to within four. All right, and they are playing stifling defense, and they force another turnover. I think, actually, Finnegan thinks the ball was deflected out of bounds. Right, and they're doing this without their best player, Esther Farmer, on the floor. Only down by four. Excellent job by Kingsborough. And they've really shut down uh, Queensborough offensively. They have, a, they have scored two points in... Uh, and I gotta have to think it's the last uh, six minutes of this first half. Here's Gomez looking for a screen. Picked up her dribble. Gets to Pulermo in the corner. Who brings it back out near uh, in between the circles. And to Gomez on the right wing. Dangerous cross court pass. And this one is taken away by Bethea. Bethea streaks down the right side. Feeds inside to Mirage who is foul going up. And Sahara Mirage will shoot too. Boy, Bethea could be down with Ali Baba in the 40 feet. She, <laughs> she has at least, I think she has five steals so far. We don't have an official statistician here at the table. But right now I have her for five. And 
Man, that's a that's a game full right there. She's doing a great job with the anticipation. Now, Mirage missed two free throws earlier. This is a third. She is just one of four from the line. 6.06 remaining in the first half. Queensboro 23, Kingsboro 19. Second free throw is good. The first points in quite a while for, first point in quite a while for Queensboro. And Gomez will bring it across for the wave. She is double teamed. She's met by uh, a double trap at the top of the uh, key. But she gets it back. Kingsborough, or Queensboro in a 1 2 2. Here's a pull up jumper. It's good. May Carolyn Oyengoran saw an opening, pulled up just to the left of the foul circle, and Kingsborough is within three. May Carolyn Oyengoran is a very good player, and I'd like to see her with the ball and being a little, more, a little bit more assertive offensively. She can really. Uh, you know, do a lot of things. She can drive, she can shoot, she can pass. She has all the skill set. And, you know, she needs to do more for her team. And another unforced turnover. Melissa De Jesus moved the feet without putting the ball on the floor. So we've got a full time, no, like make it a 30 second timeout called by Queensboro. Their lead is down to three. They led by as many as 14 earlier in the first half. It's a good comeback by uh, Kingsboro. They, they were down by about 14 points, and boom. And right you, back in the you, game. When you're watching that, Sean, you wonder, how are they going to do this? Because it didn't look like the skill set was on the floor, but they've surprised us. They shot the ball reasonably well. Uh, again, the, the run now is, I guess it's 14-3. Yeah, cutting that 14-point lead down to three. And, uh, you know, 5.30 to go in the half, they're, uh, they're right in this game. I'm thinking to myself, because I saw them play against BMCC, and they didn't really do much. It was their first game. I'm trying to, you know, as, as an analyst, you say, well, where are they going to generate their points? And it's come from uh, on Gorin, and also it's come from Gomez. They've done an excellent job dribble penetrating and making things happen for the team. Right, Kingsborough with possession. They have the chance here to cut the lead down to one or, or even it up. As Oren Gorin goes to the baseline, pull-up jumper is good. Oren Gorin working out. There's a player creating for herself. She just took the ball, dribbled to the left baseline, and uh, hit a 10-footer from the corner. Here's Green from the left wing. Couldn't make it, but a pass to a cutting Maraja, Mirage. Creates for uh, Sahara Mirage a free throw shooting opportunity. She couldn't put the layup in, but Mirage has two free throws coming. That's the sixth team foul against Kingsborough. Again, neither team with too much early foul trouble. Five for Queensborough. Nope. And Mirage continues to struggle from the free throw line. And Queensborough's gotten away from their bread and butter with Katrina Robinson. Katrina was popping those three pointers and you know, getting space, and all of a sudden they haven't gone to her. So they have to really try to reestablish themselves and get Katrina the ball and get uh, Sarah Mirage the ball down low. She's their second leading scorer on the team. Only a couple of free throws for Queensboro in these last few minutes. It's been a while since they scored from the field. And uh, again, surprisingly, es Esther Farmer, you have to wonder if uh, she has, you know, she had an injury. But she's been out most of the first half. Here's a turnover again, another, another steal for Bethea. And Bethea drives, gets it into the lane to Mirage. Missed the uh, short shot. Came back out to Robinson, who missed the three. And let's see the struggle in the corner, Gomez and Bethea. And it's knocked out of bounds by Gomez. So Queensboro has the ball. They are down by, they are up by two, excuse me. And on the entry pass, a foul committed by Poveromo. Or is it, excuse me, it goes the other way against Jennifer Green. Got a pair of 22s there. So the foul goes against Green and Poveromo. Well, let's see. No, that's a 16 foul. Officials were not sure if we were shooting there. But now each ensuing foul will result in free throws. So Kingsborough with an opportunity to tie the score. And Green takes it right out of the hands of Tomlinson. Up to Bethea. Yeah, Tomlinson had her head down on the dribble, didn't see where anyone was. 
Pass inside to Mirage, and she rolls it in. Mirage off the feed from Melissa De Jesus. And Mirage now has nine first half points. Queensboro by four. Poveromo, left wing. 15-footer is no good. It's knocked out of bounds by Robinson. And let's see, we're gonna see that pass that went inside from De Jesus here, the bounce pass uh, that went inside to Mirage, who put it in. Another Kingsborough turnover on the other end. So with 3.48 to go first half, Queensborough holding on to a, a tenuous four-point lead. It's 27-23. Bounce pass in the corner. 15-footer from the corner is no good by Robinson, but De Jesus grabs the rebound and flips it in with the right hand. First points of the game for Melissa De Jesus, and the lead has gone back up to six. Gomez between the circles. Again, it's a 1-2-2 zone for Queensboro, and Gomez trying to get it over in the corner to Poveromo threw it away. Yeah, she threw that ball like a fastball, and Poveromo wasn't ready for that. And Now, yep. You'd like to see Kingsborough finish up this half strongly right now. And uh, they're playing a nice 1-3-1 one, one zone pretty wide, and they're very active with their hands up. That's why you see it. Uh, Robinson hasn't had those three-point opportunities that she had earlier. But here's a pass inside to De Jesus. But uh, she, again, moved the feet without putting the ball on the floor. Uh, it's another Queensboro turnover. Both teams in double figures and turnovers here in the first half. Overomo in the left corner. Kingsborough, uh, Kingsborough showing a lot of discipline for a team that has not played together much this year. Here's Aaron Gorin driving to the basket and picking up, drawing a foul. She's going to shoot two. I think Aaron Gorin could really take this game over. She was just a little bit more selfish. She, you know, is not really looking to score as much as she could. I think she, on the dribble every time, she should just take it to the basket and make uh, Queensboro play her. Uh, yep, we get uh, confirmation uh, from Chris. <laughs> 14 turnovers each. Well, I got to give uh, Chris Gonzalez a big up, man. He is our statistician. He's really feeding us some good information. He's doing a great job. All right, they called that uh, foul on the floor, but Oren Gorin hits the first free throw. Anyway, she has seven here in the first half. Chris has many hats here just joining <laughs> CUNY. Uh, this week, and he's really made a big impact with us uh, in terms of having, you know, side stats. We usually don't have an official statistician who sits with us, but he's filling that void, and he's doing a great job. Yeah, pass from uh, Mirage. He had Robinson open in the corner, but uh, Robinson, I think, started to make a move to the basket before she had the basketball. So, Kingsboro down five. With 2.30 to go in the first half, it's 29-24, Queensboro over Kingsboro. Overoma, open corner jumper. It's good. It's a three. That was a three-pointer, and Kingsboro is back within two. So it seems like Kingsboro's offense is starting to form here. You see Poveromo with the jump shot. You got Oren Goring slashing. And if you can add es Esther Baxter to that mix, you have the makings of a good team here. And Kingsborough gets the ball back on uh, another Queensboro turnover, a dangerous cross-court pass. Hit the bottom of the basket. Here's Oren Gorin again, starting to make a move to the basket. Put the ball on the floor, nearly had it taken away. Now there's a, a scramble for a loose ball. And the possession arrow points toward Kingsboro. 29-27. Kingsboro trails Queensboro by two. We're inside of the two-minute mark in the first half. I'm Michael Schleifer, along with Sean Couch, bringing you CUNY basketball on QPTV. You see only, only two striped shirts on the court for this game. Uh, of course, women's game, just uh, two officials. Men's games and the women's senior college's games, all with three. Here's Gomez, she drives, and blocking foul will be called on Jennifer Green, which is her second personal, and that will put Gomez at the line to shoot one and one. 
See, so yeah, at the start of the game, they only they took 10 shots, only made three, and now in the last 10 minutes or so, they've made seven of the last 10. So Kingsborough's really improved in their shooting. Their shot selection has gotten uh, increasingly better ever since Owen Gorin has started to uh, be more of a factor offensively. Uh, De Jesus dribbles off our foot and out of bounds. Another Queensboro turnover. So again, the lead remains at two for Queensboro. Minute 20 to go, first half. Here's Tomlinson drives and is fouled going to the basket. I'm not sure if that will be in the act or if that will be a one and one. It is a one and one. This foul went against De Jesus, her first. Yeah, Queensboro with nine team fouls. And Tomlinson brings Kingsborough within a point. I tell you, Kingsborough, I mean, Queensboro's not moving their feet defensively. Uh, Kingsborough's doing a great job dribble penetrating and beating them, and they're slapping down and giving bad fouls. And another mistake. Tomlinson missed the free throw, but Bethea stepped in the lane too early. So Tomlinson gets another shot and takes advantage. Michelle Tomlinson with seven first half points and the score is tied at 29. What a phenomenal first half comeback by Kingsborough. Have a minute and 10 to go uh, until halftime. And aggressive defense and here's a steal. Coming back the other way is Oren Gorin. Dribbles with the left hand, runs through the paint, drives and lays it in. Uh, Oren Gorin coming down with the left. Then a little skip into the lane with the right hand finish. Excellent move for Oren Gorin. It's 31 29 Kingsboro with a two point lead. Now Robinson, three pointer from the corner. It's no good, but the rebound comes to De Jesus. Goes baseline, hit the bottom of the backboard. And Tomlinson will come away with it for Kingsboro. 34 seconds to go, first half. About a 10 second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. And Kingsborough showing a great deal of discipline, especially after those first couple of minutes in this half. Tomlinson drives. Dish off to Amorossi, who banks it in. Natalie Amorossi with her first field goal. Kingsborough leads by four. This has to be the best half of basketball Kingsborough has played all year. The ball movement right there, and then the skip pass or dribble penetration. This goes to show you how a team is formed right here, and Kingsborough is coming together, forming like Voltron, <laughs> and really doing their thing right here. You see it right here. There's Owen Gorin with the nice scoop, right hand layup, and then you had Michelle, you had Tomlin going in, and then feeding. Oh, good pass! Ah, beautiful feed from Robinson <laughs> to De Jesus. Good end to the first half for Queensboro, who has struggled since taking an early 14-point lead. It was 21-7 Queensboro about halfway through the first half and the uh, Kingsboro wave finishes out the first half with a 26 to 10 run to go into the locker room with a two point lead. Great finish there by by uh, Kingsboro and Queensboro to come back. I know Joe Medina on the King on the Queensboro side has to be a little upset with his team. This team really uh, stopped moving their feet defensively and let, and let Kingsborough back in the game. Owen Gorney is, the, is really the uh, hero here, really motivating her team and getting her team into good positions to score. And Katrina Artis has to be very happy, the coach of Kingsborough. Yeah, and of course, Queensboro really allowing King, uh, uh, Queensboro letting Kingsborough back in the game with a lot of uh, sloppy ball handling, give uh, Kingsborough a lot of easy baskets at that the first stage of that comeback. And then again, like I said, later on, Kingsborough really creating uh, basket opportunities for themselves. Yes, and you know one of the things that you like as a as a developing coach trying to form a program is seeing players elevate their game from one game to the next. And I know Katrina Artisan, knowing her and talking to her in the past, what she really likes to do is she try she likes to try to find the players and let them find their own niche. And right now, that's what's happening right now. Owen Goring is starting to become that leader on the on the dribble drive, and you see Provo Romo out there hitting that three. So it's interesting to see if they can maintain this pace in the second half. It's uh, really been a, a terrific half of basketball here. Started very slowly for Kingsborough, but uh, a, a terrific comeback. Uh, and like I say, excellent play. Uh, nicest, probably best uh, half of basketball they've had uh, so far this season. Well, again, we are at halftime. The score is Kingsborough 33, 
Queensboro 31. We will be back with a second half action coming up. Uh, I want to remind you, you are listening to or watching CUNY Athletic Conference Basketball on QPTV. Brought to you by Con Edison. The CUNY Con Edison Basketball Championships are coming up soon. Actually, uh, just about four or five weeks away. The Community College Men's and Women's Quarterfinals will be on February 17th and 18th at Hostos Community College. That's up in the Bronx with the final on the 20th. And then the senior colleges, they will be uh, holding their tournament down at the Nat Holman Gym uh, over in Manhattan. That's on the campus of CCNY. Uh, and that will be on the 24th and 25th, and the 27th is the final. We'll be back with the second half in just a few minutes. Michael Schleifer back here at the home of the Queensboro Community College Tigers. We're at halftime. Queensboro is trailing Kingsboro 33-31. Certainly a surprising uh, outcome in the first half with Kingsboro falling behind by 14 and then scoring outscoring uh, Queensboro by a score of t by 26 to 10 in the last half of the first half want to give some nod out to uh, Ron Siff Ron Siff is our uh, courtside announcer also a, good, a family friend so I'm just kind of sneaking that in here Sean Couch coming back alongside to join me for the second half just a quick rundown of some of the uh, scoring in the first half uh, for Queensboro. Katrina Robinson finished with nine. Uh, Sahara Mirage uh, had seven. And uh, Zakonya Bethea also finished with six. And it's an early turnover for Queensboro. That was their, their downfall in the first half. The, each team with 14 first half turnovers and Queensboro with an early one here to start the second half. Bad start there for Queensboro. They really need to come out here and reestablish themselves offensively, trying to get some steals and some transition point opportunities. There's Pavaromo. Well, looked like she might have carried there. No call. Brings it back out to Gomez. Inside 10 seconds. Here is Oren Gorin. Went to the basket. Nice scoop shot, but couldn't put it down. And the Tigers bring it back the other way. Michael Schleifer, Sean Couch with you at Queensboro Community College. Just the start of the second half, 33-31 Queensboro, uh, Kingsboro, and an early foul here goes against Anna Gabrielle Gomez. It's her second personal. And Jennifer Green will inbound from the sideline. Is into Bethea, back to Green, three-pointer from the left wing, off the rim, no good. The rebound is knocked around, picked up by Gomez, and Gomez is tied up by Green. And the possession arrow goes to Kingsboro. Both teams struggling here early second half. Owen Gorin's inbound pass was nearly taken away by Robinson, but she picks it up and brings it across the half court line. Both teams get back. Gomez out near the half court circle. Once again, we have not seen Esther Farmer since very early in the game. Here is Tomlinson drive scoop shot with the right hand is no good and the rebound is tipped around and picked up by Bethea. Robinson was ahead of the field. Bethea didn't see her. Bethea though takes it all the way to the basket. Missed the lay-in. And Gomez, the smallest player on the floor, comes away with the ball for Kingsboro. Yeah, Bethea had that uh, had the shot, but she had Sarahara Mirage ahead of her and didn't see her. <laughs> An aggressive play by Gomez. Who goes right into Robinson? Robinson held her ground, but the foul will go against Katrina Robinson. Picks up her second. Gomez is a good little player. She attacks the basket. She shoots well. She's from FD Roosevelt in Brooklyn. This is her first year here at Kingsboro. And she uh, came off the bench against BMCC, and she did some really good things. She got the team in order. She attacked the rim. Everyone else seemed to be a little tentative. She showed no fear, and I think some of that attitude has translated to the players at Kingsboro. Now struggling at the free throw line. If you're going to get there, you've got to make some of them. One of six from the line for Gomez. Though the score remains 33-31. Neither team has put any points on the board in the first minute and a half of the second half. And we've got a struggle for the ball. Here comes to De Jesus. Jumper left side of the foul line is no good. Offensive rebound, basket, and a foul for Bethea. 
Thay has a lot of energy. She's averaging about 15 points a game for uh, Queensboro, and she's done a lot of good things for them. They really need her to pick her game up and try to get to the rim. She's not really a jump shooter. She's more of a slasher. So they really need more of that from her. She had six points early in the first half. She has three early here in the second half. And Queensboro has regained the lead 34-33. Gomez, who has been at the point since pretty early in the first half for Kingsboro. Well, uh, no substitutions for Kingsboro beyond that one in the first half. Tomlinson's shot is rejected by De Jesus, but recovered by Gomez. Oren Gorin, back to Gomez, top of the key, down to five on the shot clock. Cross court, Pavaromo's shot is short. De Jesus comes away with it for Queensboro, and Robinson runs over Gomez and is called for a charge. I'm sorry, not Robinson, that's uh, Mirage. Who picks up her first? Yeah, you can see uh, Coach Medina over there. He is beside himself. You know, the, the Lady Tigers are just not getting after it the way that they normally do. They're having a lot of trouble, and they can't seem to develop any rhythm right now. Here is Farmer back in for the first time since early in the first half. She replaces Gomez. Tomlinson back on top. Pavaramo to the corner. Farmer pump fakes. Pull up jumper is off the mark. Rebound comes long to the right side to Robinson, who throws it up to Bethea. Bethea oh. goes right past Farmer and lays it in. Yeah, Esther got caught in between going for the steal or, or trying to get back and protect the rim, and she made the wrong decision. Greensboro with the first five points here in the second half has regained the lead by three. Left side, Tomlinson. Cross court they go. Farmer is open for three. She started a drive, and we have a foul. Looks like away from the ball. Natalie Amorossi is called for a foul away from the ball. Both teams uh, with some early fouls here, second half. Two already on Queensboro, three on Kingsboro. Just a little over three minutes in. Robinson feeds to Mirage, who drives and runs over Amorossi, but Amorossi did not have her feet set. It's better ball movement right there by the Lady Tigers. And, uh, you know, that's what they need. They need to get her, and that's uh, Mirage going to the rim and Katrina taking some more jump shots. Oh, Three-pointer for Green. Jennifer Green has two baskets in the game, both from three-point range, and an 8 nothing run to start the second half for Queensboro. They lead 39-33. Last foul, by the way, on Amarasi. She's in trouble now. She's got three. Cross court here. They got Tomlinson open in the corner. She couldn't put it down. But an offensive rebound for Oren Gorin. There's a back out to Pavarano. Cross court, Tomlinson. Tomlinson drives to Amarasi. Baseline rolling, rolls out. And about a 10 foot set shot from the baseline. And here is Robinson in trouble. Hands it off to Green. Green down the left side. Brings it back outside on top for Mirage and over to Bethea. Robinson is open for a three and hits. And that's Queensboro's game right there. Finding the open shooter and shooting the ball in space without a hand up. And that's why they're successful. And that now they're up by nine. They're back to their game. And that's exactly the way they started the first half as well. Robinson hit a couple of threes early. She actually wound up with three threes in the first half. So she now has 12 points all on three-pointers. And Queensboro with an 11-point uh, run to start the second half. And there you see the three-pointer from Robinson, who was all by her lonesome. It's great ball movement there. Sometimes what happens uh, when you over penetrate or, you know, you're, you're caught up when trying to get to the basket, you forget that a simple the ball moves faster than the uh, than on the dribble. And when when Queensboro does that, pass the ball effectively and find open shooters, they're a better team. And Kingsborough took that away from them in the latter part of the first half. They really stepped it up defensively, uh, but they're going to come out kind of flat to start the second half. Uh, it was 33-31 Kingsboro at halftime, an 11 nothing uh, start to the second half for Queensboro, has them up by nine. And a little bit less noise coming from the, or, or uh, screaming coming from the Queensboro bench. 
you know, Coach Medina's like, all right, that's a little better right there. <laughs> In terms of uh, you know getting more team play and, and getting your players in positions where they can do uh, better things and be more effective. That's again keep my Kingsborough with essentially the same five players on the floor just one substitution in this entire game. Right, here's Farmer on the left wing. Right side Tomlinson drives to the paint throws it up with the right hand and banks it in. Tough shot. Right there from Rochelle Tomlinson. She had seven in the first half, so she now has nine for the game. And Kingsborough finally, after nearly five minutes, is on the board in the second half. Yeah, Rochelle from Campus Magnet High School in uh, Springfield Gardens. That's what she did all last year. She was really good at dribble penetrating and finishing. Oh, De Jesus with a strong move to the basket. Picks up a personal. See Day Sue's here. Good dribble. Gets her head up. Gets close to that rim and uh, draws the foul. So two free throws coming for Melissa De Jesus. She's been rather quiet today. Missed the first one. Got two field goals late in the first half for four points. Foul on Oren Gorin was her second. But second free throw is good. Kingsborough is already in team foul trouble with five. Just about five minutes into the second half. Now it's an eight point lead, 43 35. Over Romo, cross court. Gets it into the hands of Tomlinson on the right wing. She's looking for an opening. To Amarasi. Amarasi in uh, a little uncomfortable with the ball that gets back to Tomlinson with seven on the shot clock. She drives and runs over Mirage and is called for a charge. Tomlinson picks up her second, and Kingsborough will already be in the penalty with the next foul. Kingsborough in a 2 1 2. Over oh. to Bethea, and Bethea turned the ball over. Carried. And Kingsborough will get the ball back, but uh, again, uh, Sean, just as they started the first half, the Kingsborough wave seemed very uh, disoriented at this stage. I think they're having trouble with the 2-1-2 uh, zone that Queensboro is playing. It's taking Owen Gorin out of the game. They're not locating her like they did before, and it's really challenging their uh, passing ability right here, keeping them on the perimeter. Farmer, foul line jumper Amarasi hits the front rim. It's short. But an offensive rebound by Tomlinson. Good hustle by Rochelle Tomlinson to pick up the offensive rebound. Kingsborough with a new shot clock. Here's Arangarn through the paint. Dishes off to Amarasi, but there's a foul before the pass. And it will go against Jennifer Green. With, that's his, her third. Yeah, Green tried to move her feet there, but she didn't get in the way of Arangarn. She didn't have her body where it needed to be. There's an open three and banked in. <laughs> Natalie Pavaromo now has 12 points in the game with that shot. Uh, and a five point run by Kingsborough you now. You take that from Pavaromo because she can shoot the ball, even though, you know, it was glass, it went in. And De Jesus, that was the second time she got lost uh, on the left side. All of Kingsborough's defenders on the right side of the court. And De Jesus is fouled. She'll go to the line for two. De Jesus has good size at 5'11", and uh, she does a nice job for Queensboro uh, rebounding the ball. You like to see her finish around the rim there. You see her right there. She's right there. She has to really finish that. That's one of the things she has to develop, finishing under duress. Struggling at the free throw line. She's made just one of three. Perhaps more importantly, that foul was on Oren Gorin. That was her third. First year out of uh, Queens location in high school in Queens. De Jesus repeats her previous performance at the foul line missed the first made the second Amorosi will go to the bench and Stephanie Moody will come in for Kingsborough and the full court pressure from Queensboro but the wave to get it across tight defensive pass is deflected and stolen by Robinson 44 38 a six point Queensboro lead Robinson in the corner looked underneath threw it right into the hands of Oren Gorin and Oren Gorin speeds down the left side beats everyone up the floor and lays it in. Well, Oren Gorin went into another uh, level right there at half court 
She just ran right by the defender and finished it strongly. As Mathias, she's trying to get in the ball into the corner. Robinson, who saves it, gets the off to cross court to Mirage. Now back on top, there's Green. She gets it to Mirage. Side, side shot for here's a three pointer again for Robinson. No good, but Mirage with the offensive rebound. She couldn't put it down. De Jesus with an offensive rebound, and she's fouled. And Sean, sometimes at this point in the game, it's a, a illustration of either uh, exhaustion or just more better hustle from uh, Queensborough, beating Kingsborough to uh, what three offensive uh, rebounds there, and finally De Jesus, you know they couldn't put the ball in the basket, gets the free throws. De Jesus again does good job hustling, good job on the boards, but she has to work on her finishing skills right here and also her free throws. Once again, De Jesus, as she has on her previous two trips to the line, misses the first free throw. And as she has done the last three times, makes the second. So it's 45 40. Queensboro in the lead with 12 30 to go in the second half. Boberomo, top of the key for Kingsboro. Wave and not getting a lot of ball movement. Ball goes inside. Oren Gorin brings it back out. They're down to eight on the shot clock. In the corner is Tomlinson back on top. Foul line jumper way off the mark. And that will go back over as a, a, either a shot clock violation or simply a, a team rebound. I don't know how you score that. Ball missed everything. I think it's a violation. Shot clock violation turns the ball back over to Queensboro. And as we approach the 12 minute mark of the first as Gomez comes back into the game for Farmer, right, for on the Kingsboro side. Corner jumper is no good, but good position for Bethea who banks on the rebound. Bethea can do it all. She can uh, dribble, penetrate, take the jump shot. Does a good job there with the offensive rebound, putting Kingsboro up by seven. Bethea has 13 in the game. The save inbounds from Oren Garn goes right to Green. Green, three on three, goes to De Jesus, cutting down the left side, she couldn't put it down. And the rebound is run down in the corner by Moody for Kingsboro. So the wave not going away. It looked like the early second half, they might uh, fall out of this game, but they have stayed in. He has a three-pointer from the right wing, it's good. Rochelle Tomlinson. Yeah, Rochelle's playing with some confidence today. She's doing a, a great job scoring the basketball and giving her team an opportunity to remain in this game. Tomlinson has 12. Kingsborough is back within four. Now we've got a foul. Let's see. It's going to go against Tomlinson for the block. And Kingsborough, boy, nine team fouls. We're not even halfway through the second half. So uh, the personal is the third on Tomlinson, and it will put Mirage at the line to shoot one and one. And every foul from here on in against Kingsborough will result in two free throws. Look at Queensboro, they have a significant advantage inside, size-wise. We have a lane violation. The free throw is good by Mirage, but uh, the violation against Queensboro gives the ball back to the wave. And, and it's 47-43, Queensboro by four with 11 minutes left to go in the second half. Michael Schleifer and Sean Couch with you bringing all the CUNY basketball action here this afternoon from Queensboro on QPTV. There's Queensboro on a fast break. Green couldn't handle the long pass, but Thea recovers it. Missed the shot, got her own rebound and puts it in. Yeah, Zaconia is doing a great job today. Good hustle point right there. And you had three Kingsboro players around the ball, and she managed to grab her own rebound and put it back. 10.25 to go, second half, six-point lead. Gomez just behind the foul line, the shot is no good, and the rebound, uh, the uh, loose ball foul will go against Kingsboro. And as I said, from this point on, it's going to be two free throws for King Queensboro on every Kingsboro foul. And that, fought, that foul was on uh, May Carolyn Orangoran, and that's her fourth person. So right now, the tide going against the tide. That changes the complexion of the game also. Uh, with her having four, now she has to play a little bit more tentative. 
First free throw by Maraz is short. Queensborough also really struggling at the free throw line today. Both Mirage and De Jesus. Second one is good. So. Substitution at uh, after the second free throw is made. Stephanie Moody checks back in, and uh, Orin Garin with her four fouls will go to the bench. Ten team fouls against Kingsborough, only three thus far for the Tigers. Gomez, top of the key, goes cross court. That's now Tomlinson at the foul line. Cross court again, now here's a three, left wing. It rolls out. Overomo unable to make the three, but the rebound is knocked out of bounds by the Tigers, so Kingsborough gets the ball back, and as much as they struggled here in the second half, Sean, they're only down seven. Yes, nobody looking on the Kingsborough sign. Green with the steal, and Green has it taken away by Gomez. Now there's a scramble for the ball, and we have, as Green picked up the ball, a quick timeout called by the Queensborough bench. Timeout. Queensboro. Both timeout, Queensboro. Well, I want to remind you once again that if you want any information about CUNY basketball, you can get it on the web. Up to date information on the CUNY Athletic Conference and its 15 member schools. The website is www.cunyathletics.com. That's www.cunyathletics.com. Or you can go on Facebook. Go to groups and search the CUNY uh, search the CUNY Athletic Conference. You know, so many interesting stories on that website. Also, you know, there's a uh, Player of the Week, Player of the Month. Also has good stats. Also compares the, uh, you know, where the CUNY Conference compares with the uh, other schools in the Division Three conferences in the nation. CUNY basketball has really improved. We have several teams in the top. Uh, 10 in defense in our senior colleges with Lehman and Baruch. And also, you know, on the junior college level, we have national presence with Hostos and some of our other schools. So, you know, we really do a nice job on the Division Three level, competitive competition-wise. And it really starts from the top with uh, Zach Ikovic, and it goes down, and, you know, to all the coaches and all the uh, schools that are really participating and really doing a great job putting a good product on the floor here. Yeah, and uh, the information, as you mentioned, that you can get from the website is really terrific, very up-to-date. Uh, you know, you want to see how your your school is doing, right? You can get that information. The uh, website is updated, uh, certainly for the senior colleges with every game. All right, Queensboro inbounding underneath their own basket. Green throws out top to Bethea. We're less than 10 minutes to go, second half. Green open for a three, left wing. It's good. Jennifer Green, three field goals, all from three-point range, and it's a double-digit lead for Queensboro. Yeah, Gen Jennifer Green a, is a very good uh, spot-up shooter, and she makes good things happen when she has the ball. Gomez drove the paint. If she could get a little more lift on that ball, uh, she might have had a shot there, but the fall, ball fell short. Hit the front of the rim and a foul committed by Gomez will bring the ball back the other way. And it will once again be Melissa De Jesus shooting free throws. And now Gomez has four fouls. We've got uh, Oren Goran with four, Gomez with four, Tomlinson and Amorosi both have three for uh, Kingsborough. De Jesus makes the first. Another one coming, Melissa De Jesus, with uh, all her points in the second half from the free throw line thus far. This time she makes the first, misses the second. She's four of eight from the line, eight points for the game, and Queensboro with an 11 point lead. You got to wonder how much fatigue is a factor here for Kingsborough as well, with a very short bench. This farmer, wide open three right side, it's good. Esther Farmer, who hit a three very early in the game, has made her second. Brings Kingsborough back to within a way. Eight. But here's De Jesus' runner across the lane is good. 
That's what the Lady Tigers have been waiting for from Dave Shoes to show some finishing skills, and that was a great move, swooping across the lane and finishing. 56-46. Palmer on the right side. Again, they're looking to get her open for the threes. They go back on top, Tomlinson, cross court. Pavolero. Pavolero dribbles back to the top of the key. Cross court is Tomlinson open for a three. It hits the back iron, no good, but offensive rebound taken away by Natalie Amarasi. Amarasi gets tied up and is before the tie up, a timeout is called by the Kingsborough bench. Now let's see, it is a 30 second timeout. So we'll give you a, a very quick reminder that the CUNY Athletic Tournament, uh, basketball tournament is coming up in February, sponsored as always by Con Edison. The tournaments will be held, well, for the community colleges, will be held at Hostos Community Colleges, February uh, 17th and 18th, for the uh, quarter and semifinals, and then the, on the uh, 20th, uh, the championship games will be held. For well, the senior colleges, 24th and 25th uh, of February for the semifinals, and the championship games on the 27th, all of those at the Nat Holman Gym. It's going to be good times, too. CUNY uh, playoffs, Mike, are tremendous and tremendously supported, too, by the city. All right, Farmer looking to inbound, lofts a pass out near the free throw line. It's picked up by Pavolero, who hands to Tomlinson. Kingsborough still in the game. They're down 10. They struggled to score here in the second half. Tomlinson top of the key, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Pavolero is open on the left wing, back on top. Tomlinson, they're down to six. Off balance runner by Tomlinson hits the front of the rim and rolls in. Again, uh, Rochelle Tomlinson showing some good, good skill, getting open and making tough, tough, difficult shots. Uh, here's Green wide open underneath. Robinson finds her with a cross court pass and an easy two for Jennifer Green. Green now has 11 in this game. Queensboro maintaining this 10 point lead. Doing a good job just moving the ball around and finding the open man. Tomlinson top of the key, cross court. Pavolero on the right wing. In the corner goes to Moody. Moody gets it back on top for Tomlinson. Again, inside of 10 seconds on the shot clock. As Bethea going for the steal. The farmer in the corner is Pavolero. She missed the rim entirely. And De Jesus comes away with it for the Lady Tigers who look to run. They get it down the court to Bethea who beats the defense down and scores. Bethea off the feed from Robinson. Kingsborough down 12, now calls for time. It's a good pass by Katrina Robinson, moving the ball quickly up to the open player, making the game real simple. And Queensboro now is back in their rhythm, being up 12. Oh, Sean, we saw King Queensboro look this is the team we saw in the first few minutes of the first half, and they, they just they disappeared for, I guess, for about most of the remainder, I guess about 12 seconds in the first half. Now we're uh, again in a full timeout for Kingsborough. But here's, here's the feed for uh, Green from Robinson. I mean, she was all alone, and the tendency of the Kingsborough defense to, uh, to attack the ball, all four defend, all five defenders, we're on the uh, right side of the court, and Green was all by herself underneath. That's right, not actually seeing the uh, man on the opposite, not playing good man-to-man uh, -man principles there. And you have to really compliment Robinson, too, for finding the open player uh, in two consecutive players. Well, you see, once again, we, we see, feel like we've seen, well, three Queensboro teams today. One, one of those first few minutes of the first half, that uh, the team walked away uh, just did not was completely out of their rhythm of throwing the ball away not moving the ball well uh, offensively uh, and not and not finishing which uh, you pointed out uh, particularly for uh, Melissa De Jesus and uh, Sahara Mirage not finishing their plays getting the ball in good position but not scoring but uh, they have reappeared here in uh, in the second half so we're crossing the seven minute mark in this game 12 point lead for Queensboro. I also believe, again, the fatigue factor for Kingsboro. They uh, do not have a very deep bench. Tomlinson on the left wing. They go down low to Farmer. Farmer try to get it inside to Oren Gorin, and the ball was knocked away, but Amarasi hustling gets it back for Kingsboro. 
See Baxter there uh, has the ball in the post, but she doesn't execute that bounce pass that's needed to hit on going for that simple layup. Little things like that that uh, play majorly into execution. Now Farmer drives, running one hander is no good, but she is fouled, and she'll go to the free throw line. And they need more of that from Esther Baxter. She's been relatively quiet this whole game. She sat out a large stretch of the first half, uh, as the team actually played well without her. But they need her now and her offensive prowess to get back uh, to get Kingsborough back into this game. She's at the at the free throw line. Uh, there earlier missed both. Makes the first. Esther now has seven in the game. And pulls Kingsborough within 11. De Jesus will go to the bench for Queensboro. And Denise Finnegan returns. And Esther is a streaky player, too. She, she can hit threes in bunches, so we'll see if she looks to set up in quick release. And, you know, it's just uh, if he hits a couple of threes, they're right back in the game. Bethea across the half goal and gets to Finnegan in the corner. Finnegan brings it out, and then it winds up back on top. And, boy, Bethea really animated now. They wind up getting to Robinson for an open three, but unable to put it down. And Arn Gorin. Gets the long rebound for Kingsborough and eventually gets it over to Tomlinson, who will bring it across. Defense! 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 Tomlinson, top of the key. Defense! And again, Bethea really Defense! coming to life here Defense! late in this second half. Lauren Gorin drives. She got hit in the face. She's hurt. Looking for a call. There is none coming. And uh, here's Bethea ahead of the field. She drives. She's fouled by Tomlinson going to the basket. That was a good foul. Right. Nobody, nobody got hurt. <laughs> and Bethea will shoot two. See uh, Bethea here going in and Thomas and slapping down, making sure that she doesn't get that uh, shot off. And that is actually a good foul. You want to make sure if you're going to slap down like that, that they can finish that play out. Bethea's first rolls off the rim. So Konya Bethea with 11 second half points, 17 for the game. And this time she gets the roll. And the lead is at 11, 61 50. Queensboro over Kingsboro with 524 to go in the second half. Tomlinson goes cross court to Baxter. Baxter drives, pull up jumper in the lane, hits the back iron, no good. And Orrin Gorin unable to hustle and get it away, but it, it's knocked away and picked up by Pobolero, who couldn't put it down. But Tomlinson is there for the rebound for Kingsborough, and they'll start it all again. Down to the five-minute mark. Kingsborough can not afford to take too much time, but here's Baxter driving baseline, drives, and puts it in from the right side. And that's what Baxter can do. When she is focused on scoring, she's a very good player for them. And when she has her eyes on that rim, she becomes effective, and that's what she has to do. There's a Kingsborough steal. Tomlinson down the right side. Drives Finnegan and not able to catch up to her, and Tomlinson puts it in. Tomlinson with nine second-half points, 16 for the game, and just like that, Sean, it's down to a seven-point lead. That's good execution by Kingsborough both times. They're really heightening their defense and putting pressure on the ball handlers, and that's what they have to do from this point now. You're going to see that last steal. And basket for Tomlinson, who drove the length of the floor. Finnegan coming from behind, but uh, couldn't catch up. And again, with uh, just under five minutes to go in this second half, Kingsborough has uh, made this a game again. It looked like Queensborough was going to pull away. Here's the, uh, that other basket we talked about earlier from Baxter. Baxter driving the uh, left baseline and pulling up and putting it in. And that was a good no call also. Esther really made a strong move, and the player wasn't there, you know, so why make that call? That's what you like refs to let the, the players decide it rather than the, uh, the whistle. Now, once again, want to remind you, you're watching CUNY basketball on QPTV. I'm Michael Schleifer, along with Sean Couch. And with the second half quickly slipping away, the Queensboro Tigers holding on to a, a tenuous seven-point lead. 
They lead 61-54 over the wave of Kingsboro. And Lady Tigers inbound. 4.36 remaining in the second half. Laconia Bethea, who has really come to life here uh, in this latter part of the second half, they find Robinson open for a three. This time she's way short. And the tie-up will go to Queensboro. Bethea and Aaron Gorn tied up underneath the basket. Robinson will inbound. Yes to Tavares for a three. It's no good. Here's Kingsborough coming away with the ball, and Pavolaro tries to move it up the floor, run it up the floor. Pavolaro cross court. Tomlinson back on top for Pavolaro. They're leaving her alone out there. Of course, she's well beyond the three point arc. They get it to Baxter. Baxter goes baseline, and she's fouled. Baxter's working that baseline with that little head fake. Queensborough's going for the head fake, and Esther's making them pay. Robinson picks up her third. Bovaromo back to Baxter in the corner. Puts off a kind of a flat footed shot from there and it goes off the back of the rim. The rebound comes to Finnegan and Finnegan is fouled. The foul goes against Tomlinson, who is out of the game. That's, yeah, her, that's fifth. her fifth. Very good game for Rochelle Tomlinson. Really came out and uh, proved that. You know, she does have some skill, and that's a, that's a good sign for Kingsborough. Tomlinson had seven in the first half, nine in the second to finish with 16. And that will bring Anna Gabrielle Gomez back in the game. She played most of the first half at the point, has uh, been on the bench for most of the second half with four fouls. Little Gomez does a good job for uh, Kingsborough. This could be a good way for her to heighten her game. And get her time up by bringing her team back. Denise Finnegan hits the first free throw, extending the Queensboro lead to eight. Right, she makes both. Finnegan's first two points of the game. And uh, I'm gonna wonder about that foul in the backcourt. Foul committed by Bethea, which is her second. And that means that from here on, Kingsboro will be shooting free throws with every Queensboro foul. And that's Gomez. what Kingsboro wants. They want to definitely stop the clock. Nice feed from Baxter, but Amorossi unable to complete it. But it's recovered in the corner. Gets back to Farmer, who hits a baseline jumper from 15. Farmer's coming alive here for Kingsboro. She scored the last six points for the team. And she's got... Nine here in the second half, total of 12 for the game. Seven point lead for Queensboro, 3.23 to go, second half. Passes knocked away, picked up by Gomez, who makes the steal. Gets it to Oren Gorin. Oren Gorin has been very quiet here in the second half, hasn't contributed. Was also in foul trouble with four. Gomez looking for an outlet to Oren Gorin, the foul line. You know, you wonder why they're. <coughs> Gorn had a wide open shot from just from the free throw line, right? And uh, Queensboro defenders backed off of her, and she put the ball on the floor and turned it over. She got a little too big, too too eager there to make a move. She hasn't touched the ball. Probably should have just pulled up and taken that 15 footer. Inside of three minutes to go. Here's a steal by Baxter. Baxter drives. Finnegan pulls up, and Mesa changed the trajectory on the shot. She missed it. Mathea. Now comes away with it for Queensboro. Gets it up to Finnegan. That was an opportunity for Kingsboro to pull it to within five. Left hand side to Barris. Wild pass over cross court. Now they get it over to Robinson, who's wide open but missed the shot. Finnegan with an offensive rebound is fouled. And unfortunately for Kingsboro, that is going to be five on Oyen Gorin. <laughs> May Carolyn Orngorn uh, had a very strong first half, but foul trouble kept her on the bench most of the second, finished with 11 points. Only two of those coming in the second half, though. And Denise Finnegan will shoot two. 2.22 remaining second half. Finnegan has three for three from the free throw line. 
Somebody's not coming in for the shooter. That person can come in now. That's Jennifer Green coming in for Katrina Robinson. Finnegan's second is good. So Denise Finnegan, four of four from the free throw line. Helps extend to a nine point lead. Cassandra Davis replaces Finnegan on the floor for Queensboro. So we're coming up on the two minute mark and the lead is nine. Kingsborough's got to score in a hurry. Gomez, top of the key. Then against that zone defense, which has been very successful for Greensboro here in the second half. And Green ties up Gomez. The possession arrow goes to Kingsboro, but again, Gomez kind of going to sleep there, allowing the tie up. Kingsboro's having a tough time with their offense right now. They don't seem to have any cohesion. Esther Baxter scored the last six points. They need to get the ball in her hands and let her operate. Pavaromo. Back to Baxter. And Baxter started to make her move and travel. Both times against the zone here. Owen Gorey and Baxter not having a move there to, uh, to execute, being too eager trying to get to the basket. A minute 50 to go in the game. Here's a long shot from the left corner. It was missed, but again, no hustle from Kingsborough there. The shot missed everything from Tavares, but Green was there to pick it up, and Green now has 13. Baxter, jumper from the baseline is no good. The rebound pulled down by Moody. Backed out to Pavaramo. She missed a corner jump shot. And in the scramble after the missed shot, there's a tie up and the possession arrow goes to Queensboro who sitting pretty right now an 11 point lead with just a minute 27 to go in the game. There's a Konya Bethea with 18 points. They get the ball over in the corner to Tavares. The three pointer is short rebound by Mirage is no good rebound by Tavares also misses and Moody. For Kingsborough, they push it up the floor. Baxter across the half court line. Kingsborough has to do something here. But that wasn't it. Three consecutive traveling calls on Kingsborough. They're just falling apart here at the end of the game. And I think a little bit of that is uh, Kingsborough sucking wind at this point. As uh, those four of those players have been out there essentially the entire second half. But they across the half court line. In the corner, Tavares. Tavares pump fakes, drives, throws up a running one-hander, misses everything. But Mirage comes away with the rebound. Ball is knocked out of bounds. And last touch by Kingsborough. So 47.7 remaining on the clock. Queensborough with an 11-point lead. Looking for the inbounds pass. They get it over the head of Gomez to Bethea. Pump fake in the corner, Tavares. Tavares will bring it back outside. Gets it over to Davis, to Bethea. Cross court Green, three pointer. It's good. Jennifer Green with her fourth three. She has 16 points in the game and it's in the bag for Queensboro right now. I want to recognize Konya Bethea, who has 18 points for this game and numerous steals and rebounds as the CUNY Con Edison player of the game for this game this afternoon. And Baxter in the corner. 12 on the shot clock, 14 on the game clock. Here's a steal by our player of the game, Bethea. She drives, takes it all the way, missed the layup. Green <laughs> had the ball knocked away, probably fouled on the play, but uh, with six seconds on the clock, no call. Yeah, Jennifer got up there. She, she got a hard foul, but she's tough, and she did a great job. So Jennifer Green's had a great game also. Shooting the ball and, and really, you know, playing scrappy. Did a great job for uh, Queensboro today. And that'll do it. Well, kudos to Kingsboro. They they played very tough. Actually had a, a two-point lead at halftime. Stayed with Queensboro for most of the second half. But then the Tigers run away with it at the end and uh, win it by 14, 70, 56. You see up there your final score. Great job by... Uh, 
Queensboro to come back to regroup after uh, letting Kingsboro get some confidence there. And on the other hand, Kingsboro did a good job. They they stayed in the game long enough. I think they found themselves as a team, and I look forward to seeing them play uh, again as a team. They're, they're improving and they're getting better. Well, again, playing with, uh, as we saw in our earlier game today in the men's game, playing with a very short bench, uh, and particularly for an inexperienced team, very, very tough to stay with it uh, late in the game. If uh, Unless you, you build a lead and you can try to sit on it, very, very tough to play uh, under, under those circumstances. And particularly for Kingsborough here, where uh, two of their key players fouled out late in the game. Okay, we're uh, just awaiting the arrival of Zakonya Bethea, who's our player of the game. Sean? All right, Zakonya is getting ready to take a seat right now, and we're going to just learn a little bit more about her. How you doing, Zakonya? How, how you feeling? Fine. You're feeling good? Yeah, I'm feeling great, good. Great, great. That was a great game, 18-point effort. Mm. What was the things that you were talking about with your coach in terms of trying to, uh, you know, emphasize and get a win here? Um, playing together as a team, um, learning to talk more on the court, and um, not making silly mistakes. All right. Like holding the ball better, controlling the ball better, and I guess we kept it up and we came through. Okay, it's so the first year of college ball. Yes. You're doing doing good right now. How how do you find the uh, in terms of adapting from high school to college? How have you found that transition? Uh, it's kind of hard, you know. It's the college level is very different from high school. It's a completely different level, but I'm adjusting to it, and then over time, I'm seeing myself growing. All right, so as far as the team is concerned, how have you patterned, like, gotten your skills together so that you can help your teammates and help, help Queensboro as a winning team, you know, get together? What have you done to adjust your game? Uh, I tried to, um, I share the ball more. You know, um, I try to see my teammates more on the court. I try to work together and, you know, work as a team and, you know, um, just work as a team and learn to, like, care about each other amongst the court and work hard and give it our heart, you know. And I try to motivate my team and I keep our heads up. Sometimes we put our heads down, but we're there, we're getting there, we're working hard. That's good. And also, when you came out playing against King, well, you know, Esther Baxter is a good player. They have some good players. What was your game plan personally? You had about 10, 11 steals for this game. You really did an excellent job. Uh, what was your game plan in terms of neutralizing her and, uh, you know, making sure that you guys could secure the win? She's the scorer. You know, learning to contain the scorer and see who could do what. We already know that she's their best player. She's their scorer. So we try to contain her more often. We try to contain her. All yes, right, Sakana, thank you very much. You did a great job, 18 points for the game. Thank you. Great, great job, and uh, hopefully we'll see you again in the playoffs. All right, thank you. Wonderful. All right, so we'll have uh, Mike rejoin us. Queensboro uh, winning 70-56, to 56, doing a great job today as a team and regrouping and uh, getting their rhythm together. And, Mike, you know, as you can see, as uh, conference play continues, a team like Queensboro really has a chance to make some damage in the playoffs. I think they're very uh, much, uh, again, without having seen uh, other teams in the conference, a lot of talent on this team, a lot of athleticism, especially in the, uh, the young lady we had sitting uh, next to you just a moment ago. Uh, we saw her particularly late in the game really get, uh, you know, very animated, very energetic. Uh, you know, steals, a lot of, uh, a lot of easy baskets uh, turned in by, uh, you know, by uh, Ms. Bethea. Yeah, she did an excellent job. So. You know, I guess we'll see from this point forward what's going to happen in the conference play. There's some good teams. Hostess is very good, and Queensboro is very good. So we'll see what's going to happen next. Well, Sean, it's been a pleasure today. Thank you very much for, uh, for us joining you, uh, coming in uh, here. I want to remind you that uh, you've been watching CUNY Athletic Conference Basketball on QPTV. I want to thank uh, Con Edison, and uh, we'll be seeing you again uh, down the road.